Hi, welcome to our brand new event series, Henkel Innoverse, an environment of the dynamic exchanges and future-oriented projects. At Henkel, we are 52,000 pioneers who love to try out new things. That's also where we came up with this new event series. So today, you will actually be the first one to discover our Innoverse. And today, in the first episode, we open the doors of our Inspiration Center Düsseldorf, which I'm standing right in front of. And uh, yeah, you will also get to meet our adhesive experts. Today, it's about innovation, inspiration and interaction. And we would love to get to know you and to interact with you. So get ready for the comment function. In the next two hours, you will not only see how we dare to shape the future, maybe you will also meet your potential future colleagues. So, are you ready to go on a journey to the future with us? My name is Fanny, I'm working in HR Germany and together with my colleagues, I work on the mission to attract new talents for Henkel, so people like you. Okay, let's go! But wait, one person is still missing, my co-host Sebastian, but I think that he might be inside, so come, let's have a look. Ah, hi Sebastian! Hi Fanny! Hey, See you. cool that you are here. So could you tell our audience who you are and a little bit more maybe about the ICD? Yeah, sure. So my name is Sebastian. I'm a customer experience manager here in the ICD. ICD stands for Inspiration Center Düsseldorf and we're here at Henkel's Adhesive Technology Center for Research and Development. So we have here a place with over 30 different laboratories focusing on different technologies across all the different industries that we're serving. We have over 650 people here working on research and development and application engineering. So it's a really a great place to get inspired today. Yeah, that sounds great. So I would say, let's not wait further. Let's enter the Innoverse. Let's go upstairs. Perfect, let's awesome. go. Awesome, come. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Hi everybody. <laughs> nice to see you in the live stream here today. Um, as we just heard, please make use of the live chat functionality that we have here at YouTube Live. So we Definitely. really want to know uh, what you're up to, uh, where you're live streaming now, where did you watch, uh, are you at home, are you at university, at school or at work, let us know in the comments uh, where you're watching this live stream from. Very excited to tell you all about the different things that we do. You already heard a little teaser in the beginning, so um, funny, you can take over. So what are we expecting today? In this yeah, stream? so actually today we will show you our inspiration. So six fantastic adhesive experts, three labs and three game changer projects are waiting for you. And uh, yeah, we open the doors of our lab and uh, you will get insights into great topics like uh, e-mobility, our automated lab and uh, also Loctite Pulse. And after each lab session, we will bring our experts live here on stage uh, with Sebastian and me, and you will have the opportunity yeah, to, to ask them anything uh, that is on your mind. And uh, Karina, Mareike, Tim, Andreas, Christine and uh, Michael can't wait meeting you. And uh, a little advice from my side, keep an eye also on the chat function because after each lab session, uh, there might be some job opportunities for you around the corner. So yeah, let's get it going. Sebastian, I see some comments. Oh yeah, we see Arisa from. from Aachen, hi. Okay. Thanks for joining. Hello, Mannheim. Ah, uh, Susanne, Susanne <laughs> at, at home. home. Day off, that also sounds nice. nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Berlin. Hi, Niklas. Who else? Nice. Hi, Patrick. Uh, Susanne nice. is around the corner. We got Daniel over <laughs> there. Yes, very good. We got some lovely people to join here today. Watching from Frankfurt, Defe or Diffie. Hi. Ah. Nice for you to join. So very excited for today. This is really yeah, uh, definitely. going on. So where else? Do we have somebody outside of Germany, maybe? Netherlands. Netherlands, Netherlands. yes, nice. Great. Potsdam. Oh, Düsseldorf. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we are expecting oh, that one. somebody's in the Flixbus. <laughs> nice. Taiwan, nice. awesome. Leipzig, Zagreb. Taiwan, wow, amazing. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so quite international. Yeah, keep it up. So really, we want to keep this live chat alive. So also, if you have questions about Henkel, you know, the jobs that we're posting about, really, um, just let us know. We have uh, some people from HR also in the live chat. So if you have any questions, let us know. And keep posting the questions. Pe pe uh, please keep posting the comments also. Yeah. We really want to know um, how you like the event and what you want to see next. So keep it up. Definitely. Okay. So Sebastian, by the way, 
this is a very nice car. Oh, yeah? yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't notice here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my question would be, what does this Formula One car actually have in common with our first session? Well, um, good that you ask. And by the way, it's not Formula One, it's actually Formula E. So this is an uh -huh. electric race car. And as you might know, uh, we just announced this year our partnership together with the Porsche Tarcoya racing team and our um, hyper-successful brand Loctite. And together here, we have multiple applications you will see and hear about uh, in the very near future, you know, from structural adhesives, different coatings, applications for the battery, for the electric motor inside. So there's really a whole universe that we can explore today in our universe, learning yeah. about the different applications we see here. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah, and also actually good thing that I visited Karina and Mareike last week in the area of the ICD where next year will be built the battery application center. So I would say let's switch to Karina and Mareike and let's have a look. I'm sure they have some interesting insights for us. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi Karina, hi Mareike, how are you? I'm super, super happy to be in your lab today. So on which other markets is Henkel actually enabling e-mobility? Yeah, we have just seen uh, that Sebastian showed the Formula E car. Um, that's not only the only market where we are in. We are also in, in the traditional passenger cars, but also in trucks and buses, for example. Um, here we enable um, not only our traditional uh, markets uh, with the traditional combustion engine but are already strongly in the immobility e business so everything regarding battery driven um, vehicles and uh, it's not only the vehicles on the road where Henkel is active in. I think Mareike you can tell us more about like what else cool stuff we are doing. Definitely and you will also find a battery in an EV toll electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, maybe better known as a flying taxi. Um, and if you're looking outside, there are already a lot of electric cars driving around. But if you look into the sky, there's no flying taxi. But actually, in 2024, the first um, flight from A to B with passengers will be carried out in um, Europe. So the future is just around the corner. And Henkel is proactively supporting this future market as well to enable the decarbonization of the industry. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds very interesting already. But I think before we do a deep dive, uh, the audience would love to get to know you. So maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself and also about your role at Henkel. So I'm with Henkel since nine years already. And uh, I started with a dual study. So um, I studied chemistry and biotechnology. And in parallel, I was working in different departments and different labs. Um, and when I finalized the university, um, I got the opportunity to work in the product development team for the aerospace adhesives. A lot of very interesting products and projects, a lot of yeah, great uh, colleagues around. And after understanding how the technical side of Henkel is working, I wanted to deep dive in the business side as well. Um, and this is where I'm now working since mid of last year as being the market segment manager for urban mobility. And here my main responsibility is to establish this new market segment within Henkel. Karina, what about your journey? My journey with Henkel is shorter. I'm just three and a half years with the company uh, by now. I studied uh, also chemistry, I have a PhD in chemistry, and right afterwards I started to work at an automotive supplier, Johnson Controls, and at that time focusing on what trends are outside uh, and how we can make them automotive suitable. So that was my start in automotive already a bit more than 10 years ago. Then I moved on in my career to a smaller adhesive supplier, already had the opportunity to lead a small team that was a lot of fun, and then decided to move on. Um, before I wanted to move on, I had a little break, um, spent a lot of time traveling and um, 
yeah, diving, which is one of my passion. And but then after some months, I decided that is enough water. I need to go back to another passion. I need to go back to technologies, and that was the time when I found that opportunity um, at Henkel. And I started here three and a half years ago with a small German team, and then had, as you, Mareike, also the opportunity to grow within that company. So um, the management trusted me and um, enlarged my team, and I'm now the proud leader. Um, of a great team of experts, not only of Germany, but of, of the EMEA region. And um, it's just fun every day to collaborate with them and to make sure um, that they get everything what they need to um, do really uh, the best job they can. And um, we're dealing in the area where I'm working with automotive components and that from the traditional automotive components in interior and exterior applications, but also what you can see over here and what we are talking about today in about uh, battery applications. So, for example, you do see here a battery pack with the different cells where we offer different um, technologies to support the market. One, for example, is a thermal gap filler, which helps to transfer the heat of the different cells to the cooling plates to avoid, ideally, a thermal runaway. If that happened anyway, due to whatever defect in the whole uh, battery pack, we also offer a solution. What can be, um, it's a lip coating to prevent the thermal um, um, propagation and to make the overall uh, application much safer. So that's just two of our technologies we are offering. And it's, as I said, a lot of fun working and shaping the automotive future. This is on the future side of things, but actually the history of such a battery goes back a very, very long time. So the first battery that was found in ancient times was most likely uh, be developed in 200 years before Christ. So very, very long time before yeah, any of us uh, could actually think about anything. Um, but the first, let's say, real commercial battery was um, developed by Andres Andres Alessandro Volta in uh, 1799. Afterwards, a lot of experts and bright minds were understanding how magnetism is working, how the broader scope of electricity is working. And in 1839, a German professor uh, understood and uh, produced a fuel cell, so he was the first man in the world um, to get electricity out of oxygen and hydrogen. Yeah, and think about how long is that ago already? Afterwards, the also the complete automotive development uh, had been kicked off. So we have now a history of more than 100 years in our global automotive uh, history. If you look at Henkel, we are also in the market since decades and had gained a lot of expertise to uh, see how we can really serve the customer and to um, support and enable customers with our products in that regard. And now that's the cool thing that the automotive market globally is, is ready to adapt and to change uh, from the traditional combustion engine to uh, the new ways of uh, getting energy into the car. And Imareike, you explained there are various ways already in the pipeline. Today, we are mostly talking about batteries, but more to come. And um, as you can see, I suppose us here, um, out of two different markets, um, we are collaborating super strongly on that, sharing expertise and sharing knowledge to really understand the future trends better and be ready for whatever it comes. It might be the next way of maybe it might be a fuel cell, maybe a solid state in a passenger car, but maybe in a passenger car, which is not connected to the road anymore, but what is flying through the air. So. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So the Henkel Innoverse is about shaping the future and you were already talking a bit about the future. So maybe you can share a bit more about what are the future trends that we are facing. Um, as I already said in the beginning, it's a lot about decarbonization. So how can we enable the industry to decarbonize and definitely the transportation um, or the mode of transportation is definitely a big part in our uh, CO2 emissions. And... Um, Looking at regulations, for example, the um, aerospace initiative, let's call it like this, uh, put themselves the target to be zero, net zero in 2050. And how can this be achieved? It's about um, sustainable e-fuels, for example. There's a lot of development ongoing in this space. Um, but looking at smaller drones, for example, or the flying taxis that we just talked about, uh, the battery is definitely the way to go and most likely for the um, cars as well. 
but it's not only about the mode of propulsion, but it's also about light weight, because the less weight a vehicle has, um, the less energy it needs to go forward or to go upwards. Um, so light weight is definitely something where we are looking into, um, means reducing the density of our products, for example, or enabling our customers to use less screws and instead of screwing, bonding. And uh, this is giving a lot of reliability and prolonged lifetime to this, but it's also yeah, reducing the weight overall. And if you now think about sustainability and say, how does it work if we don't screw the parts anymore, but we bond them where we really want to have a structural bond, which is really gives you a prolong uh, prolonged lifetime, makes it really a, yeah, a long, durable part. How can that work with all the sustainability um, targets we do have? And also here, for sure, with the current adhesives, with the uh, current portfolio, um, we have those struggles, but we are already in the uh, development phase with our product development teams, strongly focusing on that topic so that we are talking about like how to find uh, debondable on demand um, solutions and to make sure that we are able to whatever kind of material mix we have bonded together, we are able to uh, debond again and to recycle to get back the very um, valuable raw materials. Awesome. Yeah, thank you both to you so much. I think uh, everybody uh, learned so much from you today. So now I think there are a lot of questions probably. So let's jump back to the atrium and yeah, answer some questions in the live chat. <laughs> yeah, hello, maybe for every for, for the people who just tuned in right now, uh, we are here in the ICD. Welcome to Henkel Innoverse, to our brand new event series. And uh, yeah, we just had now our lab session with uh, Karina and Mareike about the topic e-mobility. And yeah, I, I've seen there are some questions already flying in. So should we take uh, the first question from from Defe, uh, how are you ensuring the raw materials for the battery are sourced in a sustainable, defossilized way? That's a Wanna very good question yeah. and actually <laughs> um, directly identifies the yeah great scope of our um, industry as well. So um, most likely this question is going into the um, lithium um, sourcing, let's say, in mines and all the maybe child work which is related to this or um, also the environmental influences that are going from um, yeah from mining um, but in our case we can definitely influence on the raw material sources that we are using in our materials in the um, uh, protection of the lid for example so um, this is what we are really definitely going afterwards and proactively um, working towards there are diff um, different consortia where we are part of uh, which is looking into um, how to decarbonize and how to defossilize um, yeah, raw materials and their sources again because um, the products we are using are also produced in one or the other way um, and it's here again about lobbying in the whole industry that we can make sure that uh, the lithium mines for example are also as sustainable as they can be. All right, thank you for answering. Sebastian, do you want to take the next question? Yes, I'll take the next I question. So <laughs> thanks for participating. Just keep on cam commenting. If you just joined now, uh, let us know what you think uh, and what your questions are. Also make sure that you share with us some of your background. You know, what are you studying? What are you interested in? So we can also make sure that we take that into account. But now uh, let's take the next question from Maisa, actually. So uh, which kind of fields of chemistry are more needed in e-mobility or the battery department in per se? Karina, can you <laughs> tell us a bit about I that? Happy to take that <laughs> for sure. Like if if you think small and uh, our chat partner already said, like we think big at Henkel, you just think about the specific chemistries itself. So if you, for example, an expert on epoxy, silicones and so on, those are the backbones of a lot of our technologies but for sure not only the two i mentioned we have pretty much everything in the portfolio so if you have a background in that one perfect <laughs> i think then if you find something out of your area of chemistry give it a try send us an application and uh, let's see if that fits to the opportunity we're offering but also if you're not 100 percent fitting that doesn't mean that you should not apply so also if you say like you're passionate about chemistry about developing something and innovating um, and are interested in the adhesive world and we're just here standing for aerospace and automotive and there's so many other uh, business units from packaging 
and so on, which are also working here. So whatever is your passion, watch out on our career website and check um, maybe there's something fitting and I can just encourage you also if you're not 100 or 90 percent fit to what we are offering give it a chance and let us know how you can how you think you add value to the company with your background and that can be really completely also out of a different field so I'm working today as I said like in the introduction I'm a chemist studied inorganic and analytic chemistry and now working for an organic um, adhesive supplier in the application engineering area. So a lot of things are possible. Indeed. And yeah, you were talking also about uh, yeah open positions that we have and uh, you will soon also see uh, some, some open positions in the chat. Uh, maybe we can just talk about a few of them. So we have application engineer battery testing, Product Development Chemist, um, Business Development Manager Power Storage, and Manager Lab Utilization Excellence. So there are so many open positions also in your area, which is great. Uh, so if you have some questions about that also, I think you're happy to answer them, right? And I Absolutely. see a lot of more questions popping up, actually. Yeah. So which one to answer next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really looking forward to that. Ah, this one. So um, from... Believe I am a PhD in chemical engineering, currently working in electrochemical research. I was part of the Henke Global Innovation Impact Program 2021. Ah, so nice yeah. to have you here. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for dialing in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but we also have one of the questions about hydrogen powered cars. Ah, right? yes. That could so, be um, do we also work on those for now, or is it still somewhere in the pipeline in the future? I would say like it's more in the pipeline. We have right. some projects already where we look into that and we are closely monitoring that topic as well. So just this week we had been at the University of Duisburg talking about solid state batteries, but also st as we were waiting for the meeting to start, we were chatting exactly oh. about fuel cells and so on. We said like, okay, where will be the future? And as I said, we are monitoring that. And as soon as we think there's an opportunity for us, I'm pretty sure we will step in. That is true for the passenger cars. I think like for the trucks and buses, it's much closer to today already. And here we have also in another business unit focusing on that one, already colleagues working on those projects. I don't know if there's anything already regarding that one planned for <laughs> <laughs> aerospace, yeah. aerospace it's, it's definitely regard? in the pipeline as well and here it's about answering the um, questions and re uh, requests from the market so we are not uh, sitting in the lab and say hey hydrogen is, is great for uh, passenger cars for example let's do something um, we need to have the demand from the market definitely here as well and um, whatever we are developing we are developing in partnership with the industry and uh, with a yeah, leading customer so um, there are different yeah, use cases and application cases for uh, the battery, for example, or for the hydrogen cell. Um, and definitely everything is monitored. And when the time is right, we are, we are on that one. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. So All maybe right. another question we, we see here from Matthias. Um, he's I, uh, um, asking about sustainability, right? I mean, we have here the electric race car. You know, we're working on these del electric <laughs> cars and different solutions. Uh, I mean, I know that we have a designated team here at Henkel about sustainability, but maybe can you give us a bit more insights into how this affects also your research and your application? So um, we do have the Henkel sustainability team and then within uh, A, so Adhesive, there is a dedicated team as well working on our sustainability strategy. And um, there are some yeah, overarching trends, let's say, um, what they are working on. For example, um, the circularity of our uh, products, which is also kind of answering or going into the way of <laughs> Niklas' um, question. Um, it's about how we can uh, reduce our CO2 emissions. So we have some very ambitious targets on those ones to reduce, for example, the uh, CO2, which we are producing per product to uh, ton of product. Um, this is definitely something. And our overarching Henkel goal is to be uh, net zero in 2030. I think we have just uh, kind of um, realigned uh, that target. So yes, a l very uh, re big team is working on, on sustainability within the Henkel scope and adhesive scope as well. And maybe to, to add to that, yeah. it's, it's not only that central team or also which are part of our SPUs uh, where we have some colleagues, it's all of us working yeah. on sustainability. So in all of our minds, we, we talk about that maybe not on a daily basis yet, but definitely on a weekly basis and see also what input we can get, give into that topic. So for example, 
Um, I guess also in business development, you are feeding back information into that team from application engineering or PD side. We are doing the same. So um, that's something where we also believe in that everybody of us can make an impact and is empowered to speak up and, and give input here, which is then collected and used uh, yeah, for the sake of everybody. And Karina, you were talking about a passion before. What was also uh, what, what would interest me is like what drives you every morning? When you wake up <laughs> before work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Uh, most of the days I, I stand up really smiling and yeah. looking forward also <laughs> to come here. That's not just say it, but really uh, I'm really enjoying working here in that nice new building. That's a pleasure. But um, for sure, the most important things is the task um, I'm allowed to work on, the degree of freedom um, my management gives me also to shape things and make impact and um, last but definitely not least the colleagues it's mm -hmm. just like also a pleasure to stand with you <laughs> together and and work on those things so from different areas just yeah. we thought like let's put something together and make something cool and here we are having a lot of fun and hopefully inspiring also some somebody of you online Yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe some of you read also about the Henkel spirit online and I think you can really see it here. It's really also lived by, by everybody of us and this is also something that everybody experiences here at Henkel, I would say. So are there any more questions? We still have a couple of minutes left. For sure. I think there's one about debonding. I mean, I know that we have in, in automotive something like serviceable gasketing, right? Where we have also things where we seal them up, but also are able to open them up again. So um, how, how can we make use of that, especially in the electric car industry? We're already making use of that. Yeah. For example, one product where we really are able, for example, to, um, yeah, for sure with a certain effort to remove the um, lid of a battery case already. Um, that's already out there and is, re is used. Um, beside of that, and that's also one of the openings we posted in the chat, it's about, um, that we are looking for to enlarge our PD team, so product development, for exactly those debondable solutions. There's already a team focusing on that, and we are about to grow that team. So <laughs> please check that out and see if that <laughs> might fit um, as soon as we have somebody who can uh, support yeah. that team as fast as we will be on the market with so, uh, such great solutions. Very Indeed. nice. I think also thanks for, for sharing here your backgrounds in the chat. I mean, we have some industrial engineering, we got some chemistry going on here. Also, Susanne just mentioned that she's uh, having a background in communications, marketing, so very uh, diverse chat of people watching here. And I think, um, yeah, even though we're now focusing more on the technical jobs, I think we still have a lot more on the career website also available in this area. So also make sure that you um, follow the links for the jobs and make sure that you uh, scan through the different openings that we have in that regard. And very maybe nice. to add on Susanne's comment yeah. here, so My position being a market segment manager um, is also kind of anchored in the marketing team. So marketing is not only about advertisement and whatever, it's about understanding the future trends and the future path um, of the industry and of our customers and then putting it together into a strategy. So um, yeah, marketing in, in our understanding here at Henkel is very broad and we can, yeah, we are needing all of the different uh, backgrounds here to really be successful in future. Yeah. As we strongly believe, as more diverse the team is, yeah. the better it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the last couple of minutes. Are there some more questions? Otherwise, also we have the opportunity uh, later also to ask some more questions. But yeah. But I would just maybe one last question from my side. So for the new team members you're looking for, right? What would be one of the most important qualities that you're looking into if you want to, you know? get some new team members so what soft skills especially you know what is what's one of the most important aspects you're looking yeah. for the first word that comes into my mind is curiosity <laughs> uh, because if you have this excitement and curiosity of your daily work then everything is achievable and as Karina already said you don't need to be an expert in that one specific technology if you really want and yeah dare to become an expert you can do this in every field can't add something <laughs> curiosity I think it's <laughs> a perfect word for that and the passion about things Yeah, definitely. Like I think that's the perfect closure <laughs> for the Q&A <laughs> session. So yeah, thank you very much to you too. It was great having you on stage. Thank you very much for answering all the questions. It was nice having you. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for thank inviting us. Thank you so us. much. You can stay around for a few more seconds until we do the transition to our next topic. <laughs> so we learned now a lot of the um, automotive space, a lot of the electric vehicles that we you know working on and develop developing solutions for. 
But now, you know, we, we should also be curious about the development process, right? And we also talk a lot about automation, digitalization and solutions that we're doing there and how we can also automize and help our development process to become more faster and also more efficient along the way. So um, I think we have something on that in our next segment, right? Fun. Yeah, but actually first, there is one thing. First, we're going to meet Albert. So let's have a look. All right. Digital transformation is happening all around us, revolutionizing the way we live, work, and think. We believe you can unlock the future of the material science industry. All it takes is the right tool. All it takes is Albert. Albert is your end-to-end -end lab companion, a data platform designed to help you create better products, work more efficiently, and do everything you need to do faster. Developed by chemists, engineers and data scientists like you, we know that managing inventory, formulations, tasks and SOPs can be difficult, time-consuming and, to be honest, pretty tedious too. Forget about juggling disconnected systems, spreadsheets and notebooks. With Albert, all your data is clean, connected and in one place. So you can spend less time searching for information and more time doing what you do best. Visualize historical data unlock new insights through artificial intelligence, streamline complex health and safety reporting, collaborate in the lab or on the go, protect your IP, and so much more. Only with Albert. Invent the future faster. Hi guys. Hello, hi. Hi, Tim. How are you? Hi, Hello. hi, Andreas. So the audience just met Albert, and I think now I'm sure you're curious uh, to meet you guys. So maybe you can introduce yourself. Sure. Yeah, my name is Tim. I'm working for Henkel since 14 years now. Originally, I studied mathematics and physics, and then specialized in material science and a lot of engineering topics. And today, I am heading a global team where people take care of material characterization, material testing, and chemical analytics, and also this automated lab here. Hello from my side. My name is Andres Pamuksoglu. I'm in Henkel since last September, so I'm quite fresh. I'm in charge of this uh, automated lab and uh, my background is material science. Awesome. So what are you going to show us today here in the automated lab? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you learned already about Albert. Mm -hmm. And Albert is the system where all the formulations are stored in there. So how we create, what our materials are consisting of, what raw materials we need to mix together to create the final material. And uh, this is how we do it in a typical lab, in a, uh, at a lab bench. Uh, uh, you put a cup on a balance, you put in the raw materials. This may be a little bit more complex that I simplify now. Then some mixing steps may follow. And at the end, we create some samples from this. This is a traditional process taking place here in product development. And this is exactly what we do also in this web, but now it's an automated lab. So why do we do automation? Automation makes sense for us because we have, uh, we spend less time on creating uh, materials at the end. So it's faster. It allows us to accelerate the time to market, to uh, be quicker in bringing a product to the customer. But it's also about a different way of working because um, uh, this uh, uh, ability to create more and more samples and more and more materials allows us to also use modern techniques of artificial intelligence, for example, iterative uh, design methods to quickly find an optimum to explore a formulation space or whatever we are interested in. And this is exactly what this is about. So what you see here is what we call a formulation line. So the idea is exactly the same as the one we uh, um, I explained in the, in the traditional lab. So you start with some raw materials, they're in here, then the dispensing process takes place. So you be dispensed with different methods and materials in some smaller cups. Then they go into a mixing process where we create a homogeneous material. And then we need to create some samples uh, from these materials. We need to do something with them afterwards. So this is uh, what uh, Andreas now will explain in a little bit more detail. Massive formulation line, which is in roughly 11 meters long and four and a half meters wide into four different steps. The first step asked up to here is the what we call the dosing stage. Essentially, all the raw materials are dosed in this part. We can dose different types of materials. We can dose liquids, powders, and depending on the amount we want to dose, we have sto we store them in different containers. So these big revolvers here, they have they store the liquid raw material that we have to use in big amounts, essentially in terms of liters. 
then apart from that, we have these racks here, which are, uh, they are 96, where we can store the powders. And of course, as you can see, every powder has its own barcode from Albert, of course, where we can know exactly what is what. Apart from that, we have also some other liquid uh, dosing that we can do if we want to have it in very, very small amounts. And we do it with this syringe type uh, vessel, vessels. And then all these are dosed depending on the type of the mat raw material in these four towers we have here, two in front and two in the back. After dosing them, of course, what is needed is the mixing process. And this mixing process happens in the second stage where we have here four mixers that essentially they can mix at different conditions, of course, depending on the customer's uh, essentially needs. After the mixing, we have two options. The first option is to go to stage three, where essentially we can get out the end product directly here in a, in a small cartridge, or we can send it to the backside of this machine, where essentially we can create two different types of uh, uh, material uh, specimens for testing. One that is called lab shear specimen, where essentially we have two different specimens. This can be either from metal, plastic, or wood, depending on the customer need. And in between of them, in this place here, we are putting the adhesive that we want to test. And what we do is essentially, we pull them apart and checking some mechanical properties. The second thing we can do and create is what we call dog bones. And essentially they look like that, where essentially we do essentially the same idea by pulling them apart, but of course we measure different mechanical properties. And this is essentially what the formulation line can do. Yeah, thanks, Andreas. So um, for these explanations, so um, for sure, all the information coming from this formulation line Andreas just showed to you uh, also goes into the Albert system. So uh, the the actual weights being um, uh, in the formulations or the process parameters and so on. But all these nice materials you created here, so hundreds a week, do not help you if you are not able to characterize that at the end. So you create another bottleneck. So we also need to talk about the characterization. And um, we need to learn what these materials do, how they behave, uh, what their properties are, how useful they can be for our customers. And this is exactly what we are doing on this side here. So we are doing different types of testing here. Andreas now will explain in, again in a little bit more detail. Andreas. Thanks uh, again, team. So the idea of this side, as uh, Tim explained, is to do the mechanical testing of these materials. We have three different machines that they are doing two different types of testing. In the first one, we essentially do the mechanical testing of this, what we call lap shear specimens, which is nothing else but two substrates connected in the middle with an adhesive. And essentially the idea is that we pull them apart and we measure the mechanical strength of this adhesive. How we do that? Essentially, we put all the specimens in our trays that they are already marked. They have barcodes here, and the samples come already with barcodes from the Albert team. And the only thing we have to do is essentially to scan it, scan the tray, and then press the start button, and the machine, the automated uh, system will do the rest. What we'll do is essentially bring the tray all the way in order for the robot to get it. The robot will take one by one, place it to the machine, and measure the, do the mechanical testing. So in the second part, we are doing essentially the, exactly the same procedure, but the difference now is that we measure the other type of uh, specimens, which is what we call dog bone specimens. Again, the idea is that we will use the same type of uh, essentially uh, trays, again with the same procedure by taking with a barcode from Albert, scanning the trays, and again, we'll go through the robot will grab them and then bring them to the testing site and do again the mechanical properties. The most important thing is the, in the third machine, <laughs> the third machine, what it does is essentially what the other two machines does, but it has the possibility to run it at different temperatures. And for some of our products, it's very important to measure the mechanical properties at different temperatures. And that's why we have this massive oven here, where essentially the robot does exactly the same, but the only difference now, the whole machine is enclosed to a big oven. And the oven can be controlled from our software, and depending on the temperature, we can elevate, we can go minus. The range of this machine is from minus 50 degrees C up to 250 Celsius. 
Yeah, thanks Andreas for these nice explanations. So um, this is what we do in this lab. And uh, you learned that we can create hundreds of materials a day, uh, a week. We can create hundreds of thousands of materials or test them uh, a week on these uh, testing machines. And this helps us to really develop new ways of developing materials. So we have different opportunities and this provides a lot of value for us. So hopefully this was interesting for you. And with this I would, Hand over to you. Again. Yeah, that was very impressive. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that a lot of you are keen to join your team. Mm -hmm. So my question would be, which skills do talents need to bring to join your team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no simple answer to this because uh, to make that something like this here happen and also a lot of other things we do, more and more we rely on interdisciplinary teams. So uh, for what you saw here, you for sure need people with chemistry background because you need this formulation know-how, you need to handle all these uh, uh, products and uh, the, the chemistry here. But this is only one part, because you also need people working on the automation part. And you need engineers, you need uh, people with a uh, IT background, uh, capable of uh, dealing with programming of such machines and so on. You need people being specialized for testing. So um, up to uh, the, uh, IT, uh, the, the artificial intelligence part and data analytics part, which becomes more and more important at Henkel. And this is a general tendency you see, I think, uh, overall the, the Henkel organization that um, the system or the, the ecosystem becomes or develops more from a chemistry background based uh, development uh, team towards a more interdisciplinary team at the end of the day. And this is why we have a constant need of uh, people with all these different skills. And um, at the end, it depends on uh, us bringing the right people together in the right project uh, and making it successful. Yeah, I could not agree more. And in case you have more questions, stay there because now we're going to switch to the live Q&A and yeah, looking forward to answer the questions. Thank Perfect. you, guys. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you also. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> and welcome you two here live on the Q&A session. Great to have you. So I saw one question here about the R&D trainee program and about that, maybe so to start with that. So the application phase normally starts in, in Q2. So next year in 2023, around April. So uh, yeah, stay tuned about that. Check our career page on a regular basis. Also feel free to follow us on LinkedIn and, and Instagram. You will find later the link to that also in our chat. And then uh, yeah, you, you, will, you stay informed and then you're definitely not going to miss the, the application phase. All right, so let's have a look. Which other questions other do questions we have? Yeah. There's one about electrical engineering position there for fresh graduate. Uh, yeah, they answered. usually say like we need five years of minimum experience or something like that. So what would you say? Should they still apply or maybe so, um, wait five years? I can now, answer right? for myself <laughs> yeah. if I look through applications. And uh, I do this quite a lot. Uh, and um, so... Uh, Something needs to attract me typically. And uh, um, if it is uh, someone does not have a lot of experience, for sure, it's more difficult to uh, get attraction. So because you have your, you studied and uh, then you are on the market and uh, um, I cannot decide um, um, uh, only based on your things you did while you were studying. And this is then import becoming important. Make clear what your interests are, make clear uh, where you would like to go, so um, uh, really c explaining your motivation is then important and uh, keep it concise is also important, I think. So uh, mm -hmm. Only some tips from my side when I look yeah. at applications. So. Maybe I can also add on that because I, I worked in recruitment before and uh, what you see on, on the job, on, on the role profile, yeah, it's more like a wish list that we have. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can only lose if you don't apply. So, yeah, don't be scared. Um, we, we are very happy then to receive the application. And yeah, as you said to me, you also told me before that a very diverse mm -hmm. skill set is also welcome yeah. and, and needed in, in the automated lab So I would well. e even advise if, if, if you're not, uh, um, so we ask for maybe an engineer, but you think, uh, you're a chemist, but you're very interested in these topics and you also did something in this direction and maybe even not professional career, try. Place your application at Henkel and, and typically it's, uh, this is very interesting for us also to see this because um, sometimes people then have a more strong reason to apply for a position than someone already being in this area. So uh, this because this would be the natural way. So this may be even attracting us. So I, I would not give up too early there, frankly speaking, so. Yeah. 
Definitely. And maybe a question for you, Andreas, because you just recently started yeah. at Henkel. So maybe you can tell a bit also about your impressions so far. I mean, so you're quite so new. So far, the impressions are more than excited. So first of all, as you can see, we're working in this amazing building. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, essentially, environment to work. The lab, I think, our lab, the automated lab that you showed before, it's uh, one, a state-of-the-art lab. Uh, the colleagues and all the atmosphere in the environment is perfect, so I couldn't be more than happy my first two months here at Henkel. So, and uh, believe me, don't be scared to apply for open positions. Uh, before coming here, um, I was working for a university in an academic uh, career, so don't be afraid. If you think that you fit and everything, uh, and you have a life passionate, just apply, and maybe you will be the next candidate, like me. Yeah, indeed. Definitely. Yeah, passion is a good keyword, I think. For so me, passion is, uh, and motivation are the yeah. two things uh, that I'm really interested in when I'm looking for someone to work for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so sometimes yeah. even I knew that the most interesting part about a person is what they're doing out also outside of the studying, yeah. right? Yes. Because right. even if you study something like communications or chemistry, maybe you're having a hobby that goes into mechanical mm -hmm. engineering, something like building up your own car, mm -hmm. you know, repairing stuff mm -hmm. and like that. So it's still, there might be some kind of overlap, right, mm -hmm. with your interests and your studies. So mm -hmm. this is, I think, exactly then what would catch your interest, right? Yeah. When you see something, oh, you're doing this, and then maybe you ask the questions like, okay, what exactly are you doing then, for example, and that's uh, that hobby of yours. And then uh, y there might be some overlap and some interest that it could actually be perfect for the job and the position that we're looking for, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, this is exactly the point. And I think typically joining technologies are a little bit underestimated by students. Mm. Uh, so because the typical effect, everyone wants to build a car at the end, right? So, uh, <laughs> but we forget about the adhesives in there and that w there are a lot of people providing excellent technical solutions uh, for uh, such a product at the end. And that's, that's us. So, and this is very challenging. And this is what I like very much about Henkel, frankly speaking, that there is a constant <laughs> flow of challenges. Uh, yeah. if, y if you like this and personally do, <laughs> then it's a perfect place to be because you see so many different broad ranges of applications, things we need to figure out how to solve them, uh, to overcome technical challenges and so on. So, and this is, I think this is an, a spirit you, you need uh, to, to work at Henkel. Um, and also, this is where you, in every case, need to learn on the job a lot because no one is well prepared for this at the end <laughs> for every <laughs> application. No? So this is let's let's be frank. So and this is something. If you have this attitude, uh, I think mm -hmm. it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, also, I saw something. Somebody was looking for a frog. I see in the <laughs> in the what? chat. Somebody was looking for a frog. So actually, oh. we have bunnies uh, on, on our Henkel site. They are hopping around in the grass, but frogs <laughs> I haven't seen are yet. So maybe, <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that would be an idea. So <laughs> no, gate one, when you enter, there are sometimes yeah. rabbits and, and bunnies. Ah, on yeah, the exactly. site here, yes, really. Yes, so yes, physical yes, rabbits. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about virtual ones. Okay. No, no, yeah, no, we, have <laughs> <laughs> we have very uh, all, all right. kinds. And it, it's yeah. in particular, if you're coming early in the morning, there are not so many people uh, already on the site. You have hundreds of them. Uh, I think there are no natural enemies here, I'm afraid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not the employees, at least. <laughs> so, and then if you, if you come in, they all uh, disappear. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> agree. <laughs> Okay, I, I see another uh, question about the German language. Uh, I mean, I yeah. I think I can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> yeah. so You're the perfect yeah. example. My, even though I'm six <laughs> years here, my German is limited to be able to communicate in the supermarket. So <laughs> German is not something that uh, essentially is a, pla is, a, is a fact here. You don't necessarily need. Of course, it's good to know a bit in order to communicate with people that they don't speak German, which are not a lot, especially in this building. But uh, the language of the of Henkel is English. So if you know only English, you are more than welcome to join the team. Yeah, and if you check our mm. career page, you will see. I mean, all the positions that are actually published in English language, then there no German is required. So this is German actually is a plus. Yeah, it's a plus, said, yeah. but but not exactly. uh, not necessarily this is, needed. This yeah. is also, I think, very important. Um, and this is what I like a lot about Henkel is this international atmosphere. So yeah. we are very global. Depends for sure a little bit on the role you are in, but uh, the teams are very global. So this is mm -hmm. the English is the natural choice typically because there's always a non-native uh, German in in a group <laughs> discussing. So, uh, yeah. frankly speaking, we already had meetings. Uh, this may sound funny, but it really happens where at the end, sitting with four people in a room for an hour, realized that there is no, no, no non-natives in German, <laughs> but we talked English the whole yeah. time. So uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I would say, very, very typical for, for Henkel already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. 
All yeah. right. Okay, Any more what questions? we have from Aisa, there's another question. So she says, Albert is a big ah. fortune for you. What are there any limitations, uh, anything that should be improved in the automated lab? So maybe you can explain a bit about the, about the pipeline or things that you want to introduce then. Frankly in speaking, I don't know where to start. <laughs> 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 because for sure, this is a journey. Huh? Yeah. So I think uh, every company tries to, to push for digitalization and automation right now. But what it really means for us, uh, this is something we need to translate step to by step into the Henkel world. And uh, what you saw in the automated lab, these are the first steps we are doing in terms of the formulation part and the testing part are not the first steps. I mean, testing an auto sampler in a, in a uh, um, calorimeter or something like this is a state of the art since decades. Uh, uh, but but uh, we are doing more and more of this. Uh, but for sure, we uh, are heavily working on the strategy where to go. And th there are different dimensions in there. This is product development, but this is also production. This is production at our customers uh, when using our products and so on. It has mo various facets at the end. Uh, uh, um, and yes, there are a lot of things. And um, uh, Albert was uh, explicitly mentioned here, uh, um, how to collect structured data, how to, the, so the technical storage is the easy part, but uh, in my opinion, but how to really structure it, make it useful at the end, then build data analytics on it. This is something where we will see develop the next decades, I think. And uh, pr my personal belief is also where this will be the this will be the key difference also in the future for companies how well they are doing this. So let's see where we go. Help us. <laughs> 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 yeah. Exactly. Very on top great. of that, I can just add that. Uh, it's very helpful also for us as scientists working there because uh, if you want to do something, before we start doing something, we first mm -hmm. check if the information already exists in the Albert in order mm -hmm. not to do it and no, not wasting time to do it again if it already exists there. So this is also helpful because it's a huge database for us. And of course, we can look from chemicals, from consumables, from tests, from all kinds of different uh, things. And this is for me the, the beauty that uh, you have, we have here which I don't know if there are, if it exists in that level in other companies. And this is for me the key point, which really makes our life easier. Agree. Yeah. I think there's a follow up question on the languages. So um, oh, uh, that uh, what happens if you, if you really uh, need the English and you're not so good in it. So I think I always feel a little bit pity with the native speakers uh, uh, <laughs> and stuff, uh, because for sure you hear it. Uh, uh, there are not so many m native speakers in this group here, so um, <laughs> I think this is something. So we 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 don't write literature typically, yeah. but we need to communicate in a technical way, in a precise way, and so on. And this is something you can really relatively quickly learn. Not underestimating that English is important. I think also the more you already do and train during uh, studying, it's it's uh, definitely a benefit. But don't be too afraid. So typically, uh, uh, people manage this relatively quickly if you have a an average foundation or a average starting point, I would say. Yeah, you will definitely get used to that. And I mean, worst case, there is also deep L in case you are completely <laughs> lost. So <laughs> ah. yeah, th th there is still a way. I would say manageable. Uh, yeah. There is an interesting question about uh, your team. So how big is your team actually? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the team is very interdisciplinary. So there is um, a chemical analytics in there, a lot of traditional methods from NM MM NMR, GPC, and, and uh, mass spectroscopy and all these things. There's mechanical testing, like you saw in the automated lab, but there is also a non-automated part in it. What I didn't mention too uh, much uh, for now is uh, modeling. So uh, um, different modeling techniques from, from molecular level modeling up to um, uh, finite element methods, uh, computation fluid dynamics and so on, and also data analytics. So all the things we do regarding or develop right now regarding digital twins and all these topics are also in my team. And totally, I really uh, more than hundred people. <laughs> I need, oh, wow. I need to to uh, uh, count. Okay, <laughs> 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 it changes uh, in sometimes. the automated lab, right? Yeah. So uh, many are in the automated lab, uh, we at the moment we're not uh, that many. We are four people, mm. but uh, at the moment are enough in order to mm -hmm. to be to to work uh, the lab in a proper yeah. way. Of course, if the needs are getting bigger, we will expand also. But at the moment, we are okay. Of course. If there is someone that is really interested and he has fantastic skills, I can imagine we are more than happy to, to get sure. them into our team. Sure. We always need brilliant minds. <laughs> what, yeah. what I wanted to ask, because we also asked the last group that, is if, if you had like one char characteristic for the perfect applicant, you know, they, before we heard the answer curiosity, right? 
So what would you say, describe one of the soft skills or soft factors where you say like what really, uh, even if they don't have the experience, right? Mm -hmm. But what would be one of the qualities that you're really looking for in a person, basically? I would have called it open-mindedness, uh, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I would fully <laughs> agree to this point, definitely. So absolutely. Uh, most important, uh, curiosity, definitely. Um, and I think Henkel is really a people environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's about really a very, very international, uh, um, very open in terms of communication. So you should like this in atmosphere at the end. I think this is very important. Um, and then for sure also being, at least if, if, you, if it's about positions in my team, uh, uh, try to strive for technical excellence at the end. Even mm -hmm. if you don't bring everything to the table, at the end we need it for sure. So we are an organization of experts. So you need to have the wish to become an expert in something. So, and this is how we develop people. I think it's important to understand that the company does not expect, and this is not only Henkel, <laughs> but uh, not expect perfectly trained people coming <laughs> from universities. So how to find someone for such an exercise like the automated lab, but even if you, if you go to uh, <laughs> traditional PD work or things like this, so you're, you're not an expert for polyurethane adhesives typically. So <laughs> you need to bring people to the right level then, and this is what we do, and this is a long-term development at yeah. the end. Mm -hmm. right. and, and this is what you, you should want to do, yeah. so to get to this level. Yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. to add, Andreas? No, I think I, Tim was very clear to that. Uh, for me, always when I work, I need uh, passionate people with me mm. Mm. because for me, motivation and passion is the key things. The rest, you can learn them during the process. Of course, you have to have some s basic skills, but the rest can be trained along the path. Yeah. But if you are motivated and passionate, everything mm. can go faster and m better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my and a good foundation does not harm. Huh? So th this is uh, something <laughs> where I'm typically yes. also looking onto. Because it's, uh, if someone wants to do data analytics, for example, for me, it's more important to have a good foundation in statistics, mathematics, or whatever it is, than to be already the perfect expert for data analytics in a specific uh, uh, application. So th then it's easier to bring people somewhere. So I think it's, it's really the basis you, you have, I think. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, thanks, I love it. Hey. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you also. It was great yeah. to have you here on stage. I think that was a really nice glimpse into the future. And I think, yeah, we learned a lot about the automated lab. And um, yeah, fully automated lab with a digital knowledge platform can really be an enabler also for an AI-driven development process. And yeah, I think we all found this very inspiring. But now the question is actually, how do we drive that data also outside of this development uh, cycle? And how will in the end our customer benefit from that? And yeah. Well, I think uh, our colleagues from Loctite uh, have a good answer for that. I visited their lab last week, uh, and I think our next movie is showing um, some of the stuff that they're doing in their lab. So let's play it. <laughs> Hi. So we're now live in our Loctite Pulse lab. We're here with Christine and Michael. Please introduce yourselves quickly, and then we'll start the show. Hi everyone, I'm Christine. I have been working on this uh, Loctite Parts project for three years now. I am currently the product owner, which means that I am responsible to ideate on the content, make sure it gets developed and ultimately deployed, while at the same time trying to make our app as user-friendly as possible. Hi also from my side, my name is Michael Honey. I am heading our Loctite Pulse activities. I am with the company for two and a half years and actually also within the team since two and a half years. So within the next couple of minutes, we would like to show to you how Henkel actually enters the world of smart maintenance with Loctite Pulse. And you might wonder a company of an age as ours, 146 years, how to which extent we still do innovative and really top-notch uh, digital solutions. And actually we do, and that's actually what we would like to show to you within the next couple of minutes. So let's have a look. Um, and before I jump into the topic, I just would like to say a few words about smart maintenance in general. So you might wonder what smart maintenance is about, uh, and it's basically about um, digitalizing the industrial maintenance, meaning all the activities that you have around repairing, inspecting, and keeping uh, your equipment running, um, we, in the context of smart maintenance, are now digitalizing, or at least supporting by digital solutions. And before we jump into that, I would like to start with a short quiz that actually addresses this. 
and shows you the need in industry. So first question that as part of that study has been asked to uh, several industrial companies was what percentage of companies describes their current maintenance as not ver being very efficient. Um, and maybe each of you can think about that and uh, yeah, think about what the chair would look be. Like. And actually, to be honest, when I read it, I was to some extent very surprised. It is 90%. So nine out of 10 companies actually describe their own maintenance as not being efficient. Looking at the second question, um, I would like to show you actually the potential of smart maintenance. And according to this study, which uh, actually the question says, what is the average cost reduction potential of smart maintenance? And again, surprisingly, this number is really high. It's 45% um, of potential cost savings. And now keep in mind, the maintenance business, the global maintenance business is a trillion dollar business each year. And even if 45% is maybe not correct and it is just 30, just think of these numbers and this business potential. Last not least, a third question is what percentage of companies sees smart maintenance as a potential key contributor to improve operational key performance indicators, KPIs. And again, a surprisingly high number, almost 80% of the companies say, yes, it's a key contributor uh, to improve these um, yeah, business numbers. And having said this, my question is, so as these smart maintenance benefits seem to be pretty clear, why don't we use it? Or maybe to be a bit more accurate, why don't we yet use it at high scale? That's a very good question. And uh, we have on this slide collected a few of the feedbacks that we receive regularly from our internal maintenance colleagues, but also when we first engage with potential customers. And one of the most obvious reasons is, for example, that they don't find the right solution or because it's still a pretty novel technology, they may not even know that it's a, something like this exists. Um, or if they find a solution, it's normally then more a one, one solution for one specific problem uh, on one platform for only one asset or one asset type, uh, which leads to a lot of uh, different tools, apps, platforms that uh, maintenance colleagues have to use in order to manage their production, which is also not really efficient. It could also be that they don't find the right partner overall, or that once they have identified such a system, that they are afraid that the costs may be too high and then the business case doesn't pay off. And ultimately, another reason that we hear very often is customers or potential customers are really looking for a retrofit solution. That means that this pipeline, for example, can continue to run. It does not have to be shut off. A motor, whatever equipment can really continue to run in normal operations while we come in, install our smart maintenance solution and then um, have this additional benefit on top. So how did we involve, evolve our uh, portfolio and why do we even as Henkel, think about smart maintenance. Well, Loctite is our global brand for adhesive sealants and coatings. That means anything you need to attach to each other, need to uh, coat, make smoother, make uh, you know, a ceiling around um, a certain pipeline, for example, like you see in the picture. This is our traditional business. This is the business that Loctite has been operating in for many, many years. And so far, it has always been in the area of reactive and preventive maintenance. To give you an idea of what reactive maintenance is, it really is you fix something once it is broken. So if you think of a car, you basically run it until it's broken down and then you take care of fixing it. Whereas preventive maintenance goes one step further. It actually does not wait until something is broken, but you come in earlier and um, do regular maintenance in, and inspections on a certain asset. And that limits 
the future failures. To come back to the example with the car, you can say that every year you bring your car to the inspection to avoid costly breakdowns in the future. And now, under the Loctite, brands, Loctite Pulse brand, we want to extend this portfolio even further into the area of predictive and prescriptive maintenance so that in the future we are even able to detect a failure before it actually happens. But all of this we want to do while being synergetic to our existing business because we still like our traditional business. We feel like that's really the, the core of where we are coming from and basically just see predictive maintenance or smart maintenance now as a next evolution step. So let's have a look at some more details of Loctite Pulse. An industrial plant is a complex system. There are thousands of interrelated assets that contribute to its overall performance. Monitoring them is vital because even the smallest failure of one of these assets can lead to catastrophic events and cost-intensive operational disruptions. Keeping an eye on all of them is almost impossible. Well, it used to be. With Loctite Pulse, a brand new data-enabled solution, you can keep an eye on your critical equipment continuously like a pulse. Your assets provide invaluable data about their health status, maintenance needs and imminent risks. Start listening to them to act instead of react. Right from your smart device. Adaptable to your existing equipment. Play it safe. Listen to your equipment's heartbeat. All right, so in the video you have maybe uh, spotted the flange and the steam trap, which are our first uh, two products under the Loctite Pulse brand. And our vision does not stop there. You see some blurry pictures, so really um, we want to extend this portfolio in the future to more assets, different kind of assets, and using different technologies in the industrial IoT space. So, Michael, do you want to share some more information on Smart Flange? Sure, happy to do so. Um, so let's do a short deep dive into one of the two just mentioned already available products, at least available to certain regions. Um, and Smart Flange is actually the first solution that we launched uh, and we started launching in Western Europe. Uh, talking about it, uh, I just would like to mention, actually, all the other solutions follow a similar structure. So there's always a sensor, we somehow transfer the data and we then visualize uh, the output. Uh, nevertheless, of course, there are some differences in the details. So let's have a look at the smart flange solution itself. So first of all, you might wonder, what is a flange? Um, so a flange is actually the connection of two pipe segments. So as shown here, or maybe even much larger than that. Um, so usually you have at each of these flanges a certain flange gap that we in our case use to actually apply our sensor solution. In our case, it's a string of uh, different sizes. So in this case, we have a 30 centimeter string, which you actually apply at the six o'clock position of the sensor right in that flange gap. And you can do that, as Christine earlier said, in a retrofitable way, meaning you don't have to at all stop operations. You can just do that during operations, which is for our customers really key for success. Once you have it applied there, you actually apply a secondary containment. In this case, it would be a uh, silicon tape, which is a standard Loctite uh, industrial solution, or it could be a much more strong, uh, but also less flexible uh, composite solution, which you can also apply here. Um, once the sensor is installed, it actually, um, and you can see it here, gets connected to our so-called edge device, which is like shown here, such a small red box, which is battery driven, gets installed, um, somewhere close to your critical flanges and communicates uh, actually to our Loctite cloud. The Loctite cloud is the place where all the magic happens, so where we run our analytics and in the end visualize the results for our customers in a super easy and simple to use app 
as shown here on my um, tablet. And this is actually what uh, Christine, by the way, is um, responsible for, so developing uh, this app to the needs of our customers. And um, just to just briefly come back to what that value is. So basically, thanks to this sensor that gets applied to the flange, you can immediately detect any leakages, hydrocarbon leakages of your pipe already at a very, very early stage. You send that information to your device and you get an alert, a notification uh, right when it happens. Meaning you can take the time as it is under secondary containment to prepare a repair and to actually um, reduce significantly the risk. So what does that look like in reality? Um, so I would like to sh briefly show to you an exemplary success story of uh, one of our customers, which is HNIR Refinery, which is a German, uh, Germany-based refinery uh, that actually uses our solution already at a larger scale. They basically were suffering from recurring hydrocarbon leakages that in the end caused unplanned downtime, significant repair costs, but uh, last not least, uh, also health, safety, and environmental risks. Uh, and as you can see on that first picture, or you better to say cannot see, the flanges are covered under insulation. So you can basically not even see your critical flanges, in particular those that are really critical as they are at a little higher temperatures. Um, and with our solution, uh, you now actually solve that, you apply the sensors to those flanges, and by monitoring actually uh, those flanges, you get immediate notifications when a leakage occurs, meaning you can actually increase safety, you can uh, reduce downtime, and you can actually improve and to some extent even uh, reduce manual inspections at our customer site. Wow, what an amazing presentation, right? So now let's go to the Q&A session, right? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one thing before we start this uh, Q&A session, I don't know if we can see it in the camera, but maybe you two can show your shoes. <laughs> so actually, for me, that would be a reason to change the team <laughs> <laughs> to have your shoes really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so let's start. I mean, we, we talk actually about the size of the team. And, and uh, I would actually like to know from you, how is your team set up? Can you tell us a bit about yeah, that? Yeah, maybe I can I can start there. So our team is is I think a very special team. So first of all, it's a global team. So we are, although mm -hmm. uh, sitting here partially at least in Düsseldorf, we are uh, in total at twelve different locations, um, and we have colleagues uh, from actually fourteen, uh, so one four different um, countries, and uh, we also have colleagues not just in this regard in a very or not in just in this regard, a very diverse team, but also a diverse team when it comes to, um, I would say, the background. So the, the knowledge, the experiences. We have colleagues who are with the company for more than 25 years, and we have others who just uh, um, yeah, started their career a year or two ago at Henkel. So I think that's, that's what makes our team uh, pretty special, although, on the other hand, I would say pretty common for Henkel as well. Yeah, no, definitely. So, we have some other questions. Which one would you like to take, guys? Yeah, I see one question which says, uh, do you use it for underwater pipelines too? So this is a very good question. Um, short answer, no, not yet, um, but maybe in future. So in general, the technology would be capable of that, but it's always a question of where you actually focus your resources where you see the biggest potential initially. So currently, we only do um, overground applications. OK. There is another one related to right? Then what's the range of edge mm -hmm. device? Um, so I, I guess the second part of the question, uh, we uh, looks like the pipe, or the assumption is that the pipe is underground. Uh, so we can still have a sensor attached to it. Uh, similar, like you've maybe seen in the video with uh, where it was covered uh, through the insulation, so it doesn't matter too much what is um, around the pipe. Uh, but of course, the edge device itself have, has to be above ground. 
uh, in order to uh, send a good signal. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I also actually heard that you have some quite various tasks, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I actually heard. So uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Yeah. Would you like to share it with, with sure. the audience? <laughs> Sure. Um, so in the video, I also briefly mentioned that uh, my role is uh, the role of a product owner for the app. And that basically means um, I work together with our customers, with our internal customers, which are basically our uh, maintenance colleagues here uh, at the Düsseldorf uh, site, because it's actually a pretty big site. So we have our own internal maintenance teams for all of the production that we have here uh, at the headquarter. And uh, then I also talk to uh, our sales colleagues, BDMs, uh, technical colleagues, so the colleagues who are also supporting the installations. And from this entire group, I try to understand their requirements, their new ideas, change requests. So we have open discussions around what do they like in the app, what don't they like, what are they missing? And then um, I take all of this feedback, Uh, give it to our uh, UX designers and then uh, once that is done we do another round just to make sure that we it's going in the right direction and uh, then we um, yeah develop it in an agile um, in an agile scrum method with our um, IT development team and then ultimately deploy it into the app and feedback it back to the users okay yeah. perfect Sebastian, do you have another question? Yeah, so um, before, uh, I for sure have another question, <laughs> but let's just uh, take up one, one uh, question by Sven here. Um, he's talking about our Burquist, which is one of the brands that we have here for Gapfillers. I'm not sure if you can answer that question <laughs> because I think it's more in, the, in another spectrum. That's yeah. exactly. So, so. That, that's maybe uh, just, just to briefly comment on that. So the whole adhesive portfolio is super, super broad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, in total, it's an almost 10 billion mm -hmm. uh, euro business. So I at least cannot comment on that in detail now. Um, yeah. But for sure, someone in our team can and then we can do uh, yeah, give the answer afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll keep that in mind for a later session. But thanks again, Sven, for reaching out. I think we have, um, you know, Gapfiller is a very standard product that we have across multiple industries. And I think especially here in terms of graphic yeah. cards or something, there is probably something and we just have to go and ask uh, someone from the product team if we have that kind of range in yeah. the Gapfiller. So thanks for that. Um, but I also have a question from my side. Um, so who else are you working with, right? This is not just only built through the Henkel ecosystem, but there are also partners involved, right? Exactly. So uh, maybe I can give it yeah. a start and, and feel free to add. But um, in our case, we actually collaborate with uh, various different partners. So one example um, is actually the technology that we use. So in, our, in the case of our technologies, we collaborate um, a lot with um, various uh, startups. So startups from all over the world. We have a partnership uh, with a company in Israel. We have another one with a company in Canada. And we also collaborate uh, in earlier stages with various uh, companies, small startups uh, all over the world. So that's one kind of partnership. Another kind of partnership is for sure uh, collaborating with uh, partners on the uh, yeah, software development side. Maybe there, Christine, you can just <laughs> add some more information on that. Yeah, happy to do so. Um, so yeah, on the development side, I uh, briefly mentioned it. We have um, our UX UI team, so the user experience user interface team. Um, there's, it's actually a Henkel team located in Berlin, um, but uh, they're also from time to time, uh, yeah, I think some open positions in, in Laura's team. Uh, so that is definitely one uh, which we have internally, but sometimes I also know of projects who have uh, still external UX support. And then uh, the development, same story. We have some in-house development capacities, but uh, it depends on the project. We also work with external companies. Right, thanks for that. And I mean, especially when it comes to startups, I mean, we not only have our own sustainability department or team, but also our own tech ventures team, right? So we're screening a lot of startups yeah. um, throughout the year. Um, so yeah, we're working and expanding our work together with startups as much as we can. Um, just to you know, also broaden our perspective and you know, catching exactly. early on new technologies and new ideas that we can also then leverage and obviously bring our perspective and our you know, network to the startups also. So it's a very mutual like, uh, business relation we're doing together with them usually. 
maybe just to add on what you just said, because we are on the one hand, as, as earlier mentioned, collaborating with startups, but at least we ourselves as a team are more or less a startup that uh, uh, ourselves. <laughs> so although, of course, part of the Henkel company, yeah. um, we act in, in many regards like a startup in a large company um, uh, and are also run in a very similar way in, the, in this case. Yeah, oh. very nice. I so exciting to join the team, actually, if you're interested yeah. in culture. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so I see that Isa is curious about the <laughs> sensors. Would you maybe a bit explain more about that? Sure. So um, we actually use, in our case, uh, a very novel technology of sensors, um, where actually we use uh, carbon nanotube-based uh, uh, nanotechnology in the end, more or less a sensor which when uh, it gets exposed to a uh, hydrocarbon, change its resistivity and this helps us to actually detect then a leakage already at a very early stage and like more or less starting with the first drop and even being able uh, to differentiate in regard to the amount of spillage that reaches um, the sensor. And those sensors are uh, yeah, a set, uh, completely new kind of sensors and for us, they are so interesting because we are talking here about a smart coding in the end. Uh, although currently used as a string, there may be in future even other applications thinkable. And in terms of the, the, the other question we see in the chat is about the construction of the pipeline. So, so the locked at pulse sensors and what you're doing, also some of the repair materials that we have, um, I don't think... Do we have to integrate them right in the concept and planning phase of the production plan uh, phase, or is it something we can, you know, install right. while the uh, production is taking place already? You know, can you explain a bit how the process works usually? Yeah. So you don't have to consider it in the planning phase of the pipeline. Um, the beauty of our solution is that it's really retrofit. Uh, what I mentioned in the in the video as well. So you take the pipeline as it is, and then you can install our sensors uh, afterwards. So you don't need to do any any changes to the pipeline. You don't need to shut it down. You can just leave everything as it is uh, running and uh, we come in, install the sensors, uh, set it up into the app for the monitoring and then you're done. Yeah, and, and maybe you have seen already the open position that was uh, shared in, in the chat. So um, yeah, what would be the, the biggest skill that talent need to bring to, to join your team? Yeah, this position is actually a customer success manager position and we are looking for someone who brings already expertise in this field. This mm -hmm. is most important so that in case, uh, uh, yeah, this is interesting for you that you bring some kind of expertise in the context of customer success management. Everything else, I would say, of course you should speak English, but everything <laughs> else I would say yeah. is more or less uh, optional. Uh, but of course, you find more details in the ad as well. And we hear it yeah. again. You know, English would be very appreciated, but no German. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's true. So true. in our team, I, I <laughs> mentioned it earlier. We have uh, 14 different nationalities, and uh, I think even the majority of us do not s does not speak German at all. So that's not an issue at all. The yeah, daily language is English. Okay. Any other question? From your side, guys. So um, maybe sin since we ask also the other groups again, so um, besides what you just explained about customer success management, any other type of soft skill or something you know that that we can that people can bring to the table, even if they don't technically trained or anything, right? So we heard already uh, passion, you know, striving for excellent curiosity. Anything to add to that from your team? I mean, the, the, the probably very common uh, buzzwords in this context are for sure, we, we need team players. So we always work here as a team and what we do is not possible to do on just an individual basis. So that's very important. Um, so a collaborative uh, style of working, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, Anything to add from your side there? Maybe, uh, yeah, not as a hard requirement, but uh, I think it uh, it helps if you have a little bit of, you know, enthusiasm or mm. personal uh, interest in digital solutions because it sure. is very new. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, but also there we have colleagues who already had that beforehand. Others who just, you know, uh, deepened that interest. Uh, let's <laughs> say uh, throughout the project. 
Okay. Yeah, and to close the session, I would say, because I think most of the people did not really see your nice <laughs> shoes. <laughs> so maybe our uh, camera can zoom a bit in and show your nice Loctite shoes again. <laughs> Ah, ah, there we go. <laughs> I think that's the perfect end of this uh, Q&A <laughs> session. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you too. And uh, have a good day or Welcome. a good weekend. Yeah, thanks so <laughs> much for joining us. It's so, Friday. Um, yeah, these were our three uh, main topics that we wanted to cover here in our live session. Um, still, if you have some questions or comments, please still keep using the live chat for a few more minutes. Um, so now we want to wrap up, right? So uh, we heard some great um, presentations here. We had some nice Q&As. You got the really good insights into our Innoverse today. Um, so maybe let's uh, start with the e-mobility topic that we saw at the beginning, right? The application engineering, the battery system that we saw from the automotive and aerospace uh, topics here. And here for us, it's really important. Um, I think the wrap-up fact was to, it's such a great collaboration and such a great place here, also the Inspiration Center to bring together um, different expertise, uh, different teams that can work on the products such as flying cars, electric cars, uh, potentially also hydrogen cars in the future, and obviously race cars, as you can see here again, just to highlight this because this is such a beautiful product. So um, I think this is really the key takeaway here that we have um, a space where we can collaborate openly and we have a lot of technology driven people who are very passionate about different solutions. And so this is the place to be for that. And I think uh, Karina and Mar Mareike really, um, you know, brought the point home for that one. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And, and then after the e-mobility, we jumped into the automated lab. And uh, yeah, here actually we really can revolutionize the way we do business. And how does this actually work in the end? It works through faster development cycles, through better quality and also through accuracy. And um, this is like on, on top, actually, our lab chemists and the application engineers have then more time also to um, invest in, in creative work. And yeah, this is to, to wrap up on the automated lab and to wrap up on luck, luck type pulse. I hand over to yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. So uh, we just heard it from the guys. So, you know, we have luck type pulse. It's a very new uh, business model that we're having. It's a subscription model, it's monitoring. It combines, you know, traditional business and digitalization solutions, a smartphone app, and everything together here. And it's really a digital service model for us here. It's a new thing. And you just heard, you saw two people from the team, you know. It's kind of like our own startup here um, in the in the Henkel universe, basically that we have here. So there's really a wide variety of um, you know topics, teams that you can join. Some of them, you know, we're really looking for inspired people, for s people who are interesting, interested, who are inspired, um, striving for excellence, basically. And um, as long as you're passionate, you know, if you bring some of the soft skills that we mentioned with, and maybe uh, you're just curious to learn and you want to widen your um, expertise level, you want to just become more versatile in your textile. So I think uh, this is a great time uh, to, to join the company. And I think we also saw some of the great job vac vacancies uh, during the live chat. So make sure to check that again also. Exactly. And actually, uh, I also heard that uh, there will be another touch point with us next week. Is oh, yes. So um, obviously, we have uh, very technology savvy people in the live chat joining us here today. Um, but next week, maybe you heard of it, uh, there is a charity live stream called Friendly Fire, which is hosted by Twitch. Um, so it's on December 3rd uh, already, also at 3 p.m. So it's next week, Saturday on Twitch. Um, Henkel will also participate here. You will find out more about our open job vacancies. And uh, be sure to stop by, um, support the event because um, the funds and the donations that will be generated through the event will go to various uh, companies and good causes. And we're very happy to be part of that and supporting the process. So um, stay tuned for that. Again, Friendly Fire is called the live chat uh, uh, charity event on Twitch next week, Saturday. Yeah, and so actually our today's uh, Innoverse session is uh, coming to an end, but uh, this is not the end of the Innoverse, it's <laughs> only the beginning. So there is more to come next year in 2023. And uh, yeah, the journey will be continued. And now uh, we are very curious uh, which other topics or which other interactions you would like to see from us. So this is like the last uh, interaction we, we ask you to do before the weekend. So. Please let us know in the chat uh, which other topics, which other themes you would like us to show next year. Yeah. Also, make sure to reach out to Henkel Talents on Instagram. 
uh, look for us on LinkedIn. So really, these are the places where you can also find us yes. personally, where you can reach out to us. Uh, and if you have more questions about Henkel, our culture, or how diverse and international our teams are, we're happy to answer your questions. Also, you know, again, screen the career side uh, if you find something that interests you. Um, as we said, you know, it's kind of like a wish list for features, for yeah. things that you bring to the table. But again, don't be afraid um, to put yourself out there, to put you on the spot, because then again, maybe there's something really uh, inspired and interesting about you that uh, really gives us a new perspective for our teams. So uh, don't be afraid if you only have three years experience and it says five years, uh, because again, we are really looking more uh, for the mindset and then developing your ambitions rather than uh, you know getting the perfect candidate out of the box because this usually is not happening, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. And and before actually, I wish you a happy weekend. I want to thank like our amazing team. So big thank you to the tech colleagues over there that you don't see. Um, but a very special <laughs> thanks actually goes to uh, Stephanie, Dorothee, Laura, Gino, and Carl. Uh, without you, the whole event could not have happened, and you did an amazing job. So thank you very <laughs> much. Thank yeah. you very much for your support and yeah i really enjoyed the session i mean that was our first time in the universe i hope you also enjoyed enjoyed too guys so <laughs> have a great weekend a uh, pleasure to have you here and yeah it was great to interact with you yeah and every question that we couldn't catch her yet uh we'll still catch up next time so stay in contact with us um yeah hope to see you again enjoy your weekend and until next time in the universe yeah take care bye bye, -bye. <laughs>